Unreal Editor for Fortnite, or UEFN, is a powerful tool that empowers you to design and create captivating Fortnite experiences, which you can then publish and share with millions of players worldwide. UEFN offers an unparalleled level of creative freedom and is the best way to build unique game experiences, mechanics, and islands that go far beyond what's possible with the in-game Fortnite creative tools. With Unreal Editor for Fortnite, the potential to earn substantial income from your creations is immense. With top Fortnite creators generating over $100,000 annually and some reaching astronomical figures of over $10 million a year. In our last video, we covered how to create an epic account and download and install Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So in this video, we'll guide you through the basics of UEFN equipping you with the knowledge and skills to navigate the editor interface, understand its various windows and panels, and master essential creation techniques. So whether you're a seasoned game designer or just a beginner eager to explore the world of Fortnite creation, this video will provide a solid foundation for your UEFN journey. With the Unreal Editor for Fortnite installed, open the Epic Games Launcher and select Library, or find Unreal Editor for Fortnite in your Epic Games Launcher sidebar menu, and click Launch to start the editor. When launching UEFN for the first time, or after a Fortnite update, you will see the News pop-up window. The News window contains information to help you get started in UEFN, connect with the UEFN developer community, and more. If you don't want the News window to appear every time you open UEFN, select the Only Show Unseen News on Startup, then click Done. After closing the news pop-up, you will be prompted to select a project from the project browser. The UEFN project browser is where you can open your existing projects, create new ones, or browse and open the island templates, feature projects, or sample projects Epic has provided. UEFN comes with a number of template islands and sample project templates. Opposed to starting from a blank scene, templates make starting a project a bit easier and faster. Once created, you can fully modify any aspect of the project to best suit the unique experience you want to create. That said, despite which template or project you begin with, you can always create a new blank level or scene within that project at any time by going to File, New Level, choosing a new starter island, then clicking Create. Feature examples and sample projects are projects created by Epic Games that are geared to help you learn specific features or game mechanics. Each feature example project can help you learn how to use different features and systems in UEFN, or the Verse programming language in conjunction with UEFN. You can find the companion written tutorials for some featured examples and island templates by going to dev.epicgames.com. Lastly, the My Project section shows all you've created in not only UEFN, but also Fortnite Creative. Islands that were done in Fortnite Creative have an icon in the upper right section of the thumbnail. By opening an island done creatively inside UEFN, you'll have to convert it into a UEFN project. You can simply do this by selecting your island and hitting the Convert button on the bottom right-hand corner of the project browser. At the top of the My Project section, you should see a drop-down beside the search filter box. The drop-down allows you to view your projects based on the different teams you are a part of. We'll cover creating a team and assigning projects and roles for that team in a later video. To create a new project, click the island's thumbnail. At the lower left of the project browser, you can choose the project location or leave it at the default. Next, enable or disable Unreal Revision Control. Revision Control allows you to remotely store older versions of your project. Keep in mind, depending on the size of your project, internet speed, and amount of custom assets you use, setting revision points can take a few minutes for each revision. Next, if you've set up a creator team, use the drop-down to select which team the project belongs to. Next, name your project. When naming a project, be sure to not include spaces between words or use special characters. Otherwise, Unreal will show an error and not allow you to proceed creating your project until this is corrected. Lastly, hit Create. Now that our project is created and our scene is open, 
let's first begin getting familiar navigating in the 3D viewport. For those of you who are familiar with navigating within the Unreal Engine, navigation works exactly the same, so feel free to use the video's chapters to skip ahead. For those of you who aren't, there are various controls to enable you to navigate within the viewport and change display options while working in the viewports. The most common method is using a two-button or three-button mouse. Holding the left mouse button moves the camera forward and backward and rotates left and right. Holding the right mouse button rotates the viewport camera. Scrolling the middle mouse button moves the camera forward and backward. And holding the left and right mouse button moves up and down. You can also use WASD controls, which may feel more natural to those who are used to playing shooter games on the PC. Something to note, when navigating with WASD, while holding down the right mouse button, you can rotate the mouse wheel to speed up or slow down the camera movement speed. You can also adjust the camera movement speed by clicking the camera icon on the right side of the viewport and adjusting the slider value. By holding Alt and the left mouse button, you can tumble the viewport around a point of interest. By holding Alt and the right mouse button, you can zoom the camera toward and away from a point of interest. By holding Alt and the middle mouse button, you can track the camera left, right, up and down in the direction of mouse movement. Additionally, by selecting an object and pressing the F key, we'll move to and point the camera on the selected object. Currently, we're in our perspective viewport, which is the most common viewport and the one you'll be using the most. However, there may be times when you'll need to work in or view from the orthographic viewports. The orthographic viewing angles are front, side, and top. By clicking the icon in the far of any viewport, you can switch to a four-panel viewport or enlarge the current viewport. Currently, only our perspective viewport is set to a lit view mode, while our other views are set to wireframe. At any time, we can adjust the view mode of any of our views by selecting the view mode button and selecting from our list of view mode options. You can also change the camera viewing angle of any viewport by clicking the drop-down and selecting another view. Now that we know how to move throughout the viewport, let's move on to another essential part of UEFN, the content browser. In the default layout, you'll find your content browser at the bottom left of your screen. The content browser is where you find, store, and organize all the 3D and 2D assets, textures, materials, effects, and everything else in your project. It's also where you can find all of the Fortnite 3D assets, devices, materials, VFX, and more. From the content browser, you can search for assets in the search bar, import assets into the content browser, create and modify folders, and much more. Something to note, like in Unreal Engine, within UEFN, we can move, rearrange, close, or dock any of the editor windows and panels. If you accidentally close or lose a panel or window, by going to the Windows drop-down on your top menu bar, you can find and open that window or panel. Additionally, you can navigate through multiple windows by stacking them together and navigating to them through tabs, similar to a web browser. Using our content browser, let's add a Fortnite 3D asset. To do this, simply select the Fortnite folder with the content browser and locate an asset with the folders. For this example, we'll use the Lonely Lodge assets, but feel free to explore all the assets Fortnite has to offer. Next, let's talk about how to move, rotate, and scale objects within our scene. If we look beside our Project Size button on the top of our viewport, we can also see the Selection button, Transform Move, Rotate, and Scale buttons. If we select an object with our Transform Move button selected, we'll see the Move Transform widget controls now on the pivot point of the object. By clicking and dragging on the center position of the widget, we can freely position our object in any direction. Alternatively, by selecting the blue, green, or red arrow, we'll only move our object in that axis. If we press the Transform Rotation button, it will change into the Rotation Transform widget, and pressing the Scale key will change it to the Scale Transform widget. Alternatively, pressing the W key will enable the Move Transform, 
The E key will enable rotation, the IR key will enable scale, and the Q key will enable selection. By default, the rotation and scale are all set to snap to a value, while the move transform is set to snap to a grid unit value. Grid snapping objects to a grid is a fast way to place assets, such as walls, alongside each other without gaps or spaces in between them. That being said, snapping can be adjusted or turned off for the movement, rotation, and scale at any time by simply clicking the button or adjusted within the dropdown. Something to note, the snapping for Fortnite building blueprint objects, such as architectural elements, is a bit different from blueprint props and static meshes. Instead of using the displayed snapping grid unit size to snap to, it uses a universal Fortnite asset grid size. This is why, despite lowering your snapping grid unit size, Fortnite building props such as walls, floor, and stairs will still snap to at the same grid size. If you make a mistake while placing objects or at any point within your project, you can undo a set number of previous actions. You can find the Undo button in the Edit dropdown, or you can simply use the hotkey, Control-Z. To redo an action you've undone, hit the Redo button in the Edit dropdown, or you can simply use the hotkey, Control-Y. You can also find a history of your past actions within Undo History in the Edit dropdown. Using the Undo History, you can quickly jump to the point you'd like to return to, opposed to undoing every action one by one. Another essential piece of knowledge is how to create an instance or duplicate assets in your scene. Duplicating assets is a great way to save on memory and system resources. UEFN allows us to duplicate assets in our scene in a number of ways. The easiest and most common method is to select an object or object, hold Alt, then move or rotate the object to create an instance. Alternatively, selecting an object and pressing Control D Lastly, select an object, then press Control c to copy, then Control v to paste. The outliner lists all the items within our scene, as well as what type of item they are. You can identify the different types by the type list, as well as the icons. You can also hide and display assets by disabling and enabling the eye icon. Keep in mind the assets won't be hidden in-game, simply within the editor view. As the assets in your level grow, organizing your project within the outliner can be essential in finding and identifying all the different assets in your level. All the information, values, and properties for an item, or items that we have selected within our scene, are in the Details panel. Our Details panel allows us to see and adjust the properties for objects, or objects we have selected with our scene. You can adjust the transform properties, the mesh the component is using, the meshes, materials, attributes such as visibility, cast shadows, intensity, radius, and colors for lights, and a host of other properties. Additionally, the detail panel can allow you to adjust the properties of individual components for objects that contain multiple components, such as Fortnite blueprint assets. Tips and tricks. A few tips when placing assets in your scene are, Holding shift and selecting objects in your scene or outliner will select multiple objects. With multiple objects selected, you can deselect one of those objects by holding control and clicking on it. Scaling any asset in a negative value within the details panel will flip that object in that axis. You can replace any object in your scene with one you've selected in the content browser by right-clicking on the object or objects. Then within the asset options pop-up dropdown, go to replace selected actors. You can also set an object you've selected within your content browser in the same location of an object in your scene. Simply right-click the object in your scene. And in the Asset Options, go to Place Actor. If you have an asset you know that you're going to duplicate a number of times, it's best to place that asset in a folder in your outliner before duplicating the asset. This way, all the duplicates will automatically go in that same folder. To create a folder in the Outliner, right-click an empty space in the Outliner and within the Hierarchy pop-up, select Create Folder. A fast way to select a group of objects is, after placing them in a folder in the Outliner, right-click the folder and in the pop-up drop-down, go to Select and click All Descendants. 
This will select every asset within the folder and allow you to move, rotate, or scale them all together. Parenting assets is another good way to move, rotate, or scale multiple assets all at once. To parent an asset, simply drag the child or children assets on the parent in the outliner. Something to note, simply selecting a parent object and duplicating or copying and pasting it will not duplicate the child assets also. To do that, you'll need to select the parent as well as the child assets to duplicate all of them. Lastly, don't be afraid to mix and match different types or styles of assets. Always be sure to save frequently. A good way to easily identify objects in your scene that aren't saved is by the star in the outliner. To save your level, simply go to File and select Save. Or use the hotkey, Control S. To save the scene under a different name, select File, then Save As. All of the levels in your project save to the content browser. From the content browser, you can switch between levels or scenes in your project by double-clicking the level you want to open. If at any time your editor begins to run slowly due to your scene size, amount of RAM, or graphics card, you can do one of three things individually or in combination to fix it. First, disable real-time rendering and lighting updates. You can do this by clicking the three-line button on the far left of the viewport, then select Disable Real-Time. Next, adjust the graphics settings within your editor. You can do this by clicking the Scalability button in your viewport. Or adjusting the scalability in Settings. If at that point the editor is still performing poorly, set your view mode to unlit within your viewport. You can play through or play test your level at any time by pressing the Launch Session button. Unlike Unreal Engine, which allows you to preview within the editor with UEFN, you preview and test online within Fortnite itself. Once connected, you can simultaneously edit your level within UEFN and using the in-game creative tool. Congratulations! You've now gained the essential skills to navigate the editor's interface, create projects, and place 3D assets. But this is just the beginning of your journey into the world of Fortnite creative development. In our next series of videos, we'll delve deeper into the realm of the unique functionality and systems within UEFN, unlocking features that extend far beyond the limitations of the in-game creative toolset. We'll guide you through the process of creating and publishing your own Fortnite maps, from concept to completion. So, get ready to embark on an exciting journey of advanced Unreal Editor techniques and map creation mastery. Prepare to unleash your creativity and bring your Fortnite map ideas to life. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next chapter in your Unreal Editor for Fortnite journey.